In this video, we will solve the given system of linear equations using an augmented matrix by writing the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form using the TI-84 graphing calculator. Before we form the augmented matrix though, it's important to remember the linear equations must be in standard form where we have the x and y terms on the left and the constants on the right. So going back to our example, notice how the second equation is not in standard form. For the equation to be in standard form, we need to subtract 20 on both sides of the equation. If we subtract 20 on both sides, we have the equation negative 6x plus 2y equals negative 20. This is the form of the equation we use to form the augmented matrix. So looking at the first equation, because the coefficient of x is three, the coefficient of y is negative one, and the constant term on the right is 10, the first row of the augmented matrix is three, negative one, 10. Now looking at the second equation, the coefficient of x is negative six, the coefficient of y is two, and the constant is negative 20, giving us a second row of negative six, two, negative 20. The next step is to enter the augmented matrix in the TI-84. So we press second, x to the power of negative one for the matrix menu, right arrow twice to edit. Let's enter the matrix in matrix A, so we press enter. We enter the dimensions, so we press two, enter, three, enter for the two by three matrix. And now we enter the elements and press enter after every entry. So we press three, enter, negative one, enter, and so on. And now we go back to the home screen by pressing second mode for quit. Go back to the matrix menu by pressing second, x to the power of negative one, right arrow once to math, up five times for RREF for reduced row echelon form, press enter. And now we need to select matrix A by going back to the matrix menu, second, x to the power of negative one, matrix A is already selected, we press enter, right parenthesis and enter. Notice how we have repeating decimals. To convert the repeating decimals to fractions, we press math, enter, enter. Row one is one, negative one third, 10 thirds. Row two is zero, zero, zero. Let's record this and then interpret the results. Remember the coefficients of x are in column one, the coefficients of y are in column two, and the constants are in column three. But notice how in this case we have a row of zeros here. The equivalent equation is zero equals zero. Notice how there are no variables, but this equation is true, it's always true, which indicates we have an infinite number of solutions and the system is consistent and dependent. When this occurs, sometimes we just indicate we have infinite solutions. Other times we're told to introduce a new variable and express these solutions using the new parameter. Before we do this, notice how the equivalent equation to row one is one x or x minus one third y equals 10 thirds. So notice how if we were to solve this for x, we would add one third y to both sides and x is equal to 10 thirds plus one third y. So from here, if we introduce a new parameter, let's say t, where t is any real number, we could let y equal t, and if y is equal to t, notice how x is equal to 10 thirds plus one third t. This is another way to express we have an infinite number of solutions using the parameter t. So again, it just depends on the textbook or your directions. We do have an infinite number of solutions, which means the system is consistent and dependent. We can also say that if t is all real numbers, we can express the infinite number of solutions as x equals 10 thirds plus one third t and y equals t. which means, remember, if we were to graph the two lines, the two lines coincide, or the two lines are on top of each other. I hope you found this helpful.